Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. A question that I get a lot on the channel is why do I use a pressure pot to cure my urethane when I'm making wheels and bushings? The quick answer is it eliminates bubbles from the material. It compresses any bubbles down and dissolves them, leaving you a solid block of urethane that makes for a stronger, more structural part. But those of you who know a little something about casting might be wondering, why not a vacuum chamber? Would a vacuum chamber work? And I think it would. The urethanes that I've used so far on this channel have a really short pot life, which means they set up within a matter of minutes, and that's why, so far, I've been using a pressure pot. With vacuum degassing, you have to mix your resin, you have to put it into your vacuum chamber, you have to pull a vacuum, which pulls all the bubbles out, and once they're out, you have to take your resin back out of the vacuum chamber and pour your mold. With a pressure pot, you just mix your resin, pour your mold, put it in the pot, and pressurize, and you're done. It's much faster, and when you've only got a couple minutes of working time, every second counts. But pressure casting does have its downsides. The tooling is expensive. The cheapest way to do it is to buy a paint pressure pot, and you also need a compressor, and you need all of the plumbing hardware to retrofit the paint pot into the pressure pot that we can use for casting. A pressure vessel is also inherently less safe than a vacuum chamber. If your pressure pot fails, it could burst or explode, throwing shrapnel all around your shop. On the other hand, when a vacuum chamber fails, it just collapses in on itself, which still makes a really loud bang, but it's much less violent and it's much less likely to throw debris around that could be dangerous. A standard vacuum setup for casting isn't a whole lot cheaper than a pressure pot, but what if we could get that cost down? It would really lower the barrier to entry to making parts like wheels and bushings at home. So in this video, I'm going to experiment with a method that one of you guys sent me to try to do just that. John Cummings left me a comment on one of my videos. He did some digging into some ways for inexpensively removing bubbles from casting materials, and he sent me this really cool video by Jasper Sicken. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He uses a food sealing vacuum pump in order to pull bubbles out of casting resin. It's an awesome technique, and if we're able to transfer it over from casting resins to being able to cast urethanes, then we can get a wheel and bushing casting setup for about 50 bucks. So let's take a look. Here's the pump I chose. There are a ton of these cheap vacuum food sealers available. This was the least expensive one I could find that didn't have a bunch of bad reviews. Although in the long run, I think it might be better to spring for a higher quality pump. More on that later. And this is the container I picked for my vacuum chamber. It's plastic, it's got a swing top lid, a latch, a gasket, and that should get me a good airtight seal. But in addition to being easier to open and shut, I think the plastic jar is going to be safer than glass in the case of a failure, since it won't shatter. I used a step drill to drill a hole in the lid and, well, that's it. Our vacuum chamber is done. It really couldn't be any easier. To use it, you simply fit the pump over the hole on the lid and turn it on. After a few seconds of pressing it down into place, the vacuum will seal itself and the pump will continue to pull air out of the container. To release it, you just tilt the pump and break the seal. Now that we know our pump is pulling a vacuum, let's run some tests. To start with, I'm trying out Specialty Resins Flex at 90, which I've successfully used under pressure to cast skateboard wheels. I mixed my batch, dropped it in the jar, sealed, and started pulling a vacuum. Hmm, the urethane does seem to be bubbling, and when I release the vacuum, it does collapse back down, which is part of how this is all supposed to work. But this particular resin only has a three minute pot life, and just like that, it's already starting to set up and those bubbles are trapped in place. And that obviously didn't work out, so let's give it another try. This time around, I'm gonna pull a longer single vacuum instead of a number of shorter ones. I'm not sure. And that seems to have worked out better, but it's still not really what we're looking for. Even though the urethane is collapsing down at the end, some of the bubbles are still staying in place. Let's try something else. This casting resin has a similarly short pot life, but is far, far less viscous. Maybe the vacuum will be able to pull the bubbles out of the thinner liquid better than it will out of the more viscous urethane. Mix. Pop. 
Ha. See you. Po. Oh my god. That went everywhere. <laughs> Dang, I released the vacuum way too fast on that one. But the way it collapses down means that something here is working right. Unfortunately, just like the urethanes, this resin set up almost immediately, trapping bubbles in place. This is a different casting resin that has a much longer pot life, and it's also the only two-part resin that I've got left in the shop. So let's try it out and hope for something good. I mixed up a batch and got it in the pot. And again, we can see that the vacuum is doing something. Since this resin has such a long pot life, I actually left it under vacuum for about 10 minutes. And when I went to crack it back open... Huh. Still some small bubbles. But I came back a few minutes later and look at that. That is a crystal clear, bubble-free puck of resin. So what's going on here? We've confirmed that this technique works for some casting resins, but is there any hope of being able to degas urethane on the cheap? Well, let's talk. First of all, I think pot life is gonna make all of the difference. If we can find a suitable, hobby-grade, off-the-shelf urethane with a nice, long pot life, I think the food sealer method might have legs. But it's really hard to tell right now because it seems like the urethane is setting up before the vacuum has a chance to pull the bubbles out all the way. Another stumbling block is I think this pump might just be a little bit too weak. Normally, vacuum degassing looks a bit like the material's boiling, but for this, it looked a little bit more like a simmer. Now, from my experiment, I was shooting for extreme low cost, which means there might be higher quality, better pumps out there that allow us to pull more vacuum faster and therefore should get better results. A stronger pump and a urethane with a longer pot life and we might just be in business. So that's where we stand. Not a conclusive experiment, but one that suggests that there is a solution still out there waiting to be discovered. So I'm gonna do my best to hunt down some more forgiving urethanes, find a stronger pump, and get the cost of casting these materials way down so that you guys can get out there and start making your own wheels, and bushings, and other parts. And if you wanna help me help you, you could always check out the Patreon. The support over there is what allows me to buy materials for experiments like this. And I'm so grateful to everyone who's already supporting over there. You guys rock. There's a link down in the description below. If you want to see the next iteration of this experiment and a lot of other awesome DIY board sports stuff, you should go ahead and click that subscribe button because that's what we do here. There's a new project every week. If you got questions or comments, leave them down below. If grandma has the best, coolest vacuum sealer you've ever seen and you want to recommend it, leave it down below. We'll talk. You and me will talk. And as always, I love having you guys along for the ride. So until next time, I'll see you soon.